Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be learning how to draw Pikachu. Without doubt, one of the most adorable characters ever created. Uh, let's begin with some basic guidelines for the head and the body. All right, so uh, you can see that the head is uh, fairly round, a little flattened at the top. So that's one thing I would say to pay attention to. Uh, but quite round here at the bottom. And uh, notice these sort of little indentations on either side, uh, sort of suggesting cheeks, I think, uh, uh, down here. And if you can get the head at this uh, size, I'm not really doing measurements here. I happen to be drawing this about an inch, I suppose, from top to bottom. But, you, you know, you can draw this at any size you want. Make sure that the body uh, is basically the same distance um, from neck to bottom as from uh, neck to the top of the head. Uh, here I've got one leg that's kind of coming down, so maybe that distance is a little bit longer. But I would say the basic, you know, if we imagine a spinal cord, <laughs> Does Pikachu have a spinal cord? Um, but, but that distance from here to there is pretty close to that distance from the uh, top of the head to the bottom of the head. Um, and then, yeah, basically uh, it's uh, the body is narrowing up near the where it joins the head, widening out as it get to the, gets to the bottom. And I think there are, it's sort of rounded out uh, where the legs are going to join, or the feet, I should say, because it's almost like he barely has legs. <laughs> Just so you can see the feet poking out of the bottom. Um, let's go ahead now then and draw the arms and the feet. All right, now one of the interesting things that I noticed uh, as I studied the character is how large uh, the arms are. They're pretty puffy and wide, uh, certainly in contrast to the legs. Uh, as I said, it's almost as if there are no legs, and very often you just see this little indication of a uh, foot poking out here at the bottom. Now I decided to have one of the feet kicking up in the air. I'd seen one illustration that had him uh, in that pose, and so um, that's uh, exactly uh, what we're doing here. You, you basically get a very narrow oval and then you draw a curved line behind it and that sort of suggests this kicking up leg as <laughs> as Pikachu joyfully cries Pika ah! in any case um, everyone's like that is the worst Pika I've ever heard Mark get it right anyway you can see me racing away just a little bit here where the uh, arms join the body and, oh, one last thing I was going to say about the hands. Surprisingly, given how small they are, the uh, artists actually do give him uh, five fingers and a thumb. I've been saying him. Is it her? I ought to know <laughs> before I do a video. But there are actually five uh, or four fingers and one thumb. It's very tiny, but it's, it's in there. Uh, on each one of these hands. And so you do have to sort of pay attention to which one's the thumb and then uh, go in and do the little fingers. Well, I think it is time to do... Let's do the ears first, uh, and then we'll move on to the facial features. So uh, just as I did with the arms, I'm going to erase away a little here so that the ears uh, join the uh, head. And uh, notice that they're at uh, two slightly different angles. Most of the poses I saw uh, had that approach uh, to Pikachu's ears. You, you want to measure the length of each ear. Again, I would say, well, it's a little less maybe. I don't know. I haven't sat down and measured it, but um, probably about the same, really. You certainly don't want them to be longer than the distance from the top of the head to the bottom of the head. Speaking of the bottom of the head, I think I do actually need to erase this away because uh, the head joining in, there's pr practically no neck, uh, really. Um, the bottom of the head is going to be suggested more by coloring than by a line. All right. And, uh, of course, there are uh, these black areas at the tips of each um, ear. And the line that you draw across the ear has to be drawn diagonally, it seems to me. It's not just like straight across. It's uh, sloping downward. On each of the outside, I guess on the outside line, sloping downward towards the outside. Uh, if you really want to get all the details right, and I think it's important when you're drawing a pre-established character. Um, to, to you, know, you know, do exactly as you uh, see the original artists having done. And then maybe later on, if you want to play around with it and do your version of Pikachu, uh, have at it, I say. Well, let's go ahead now and do the facial features. 
Well, I thought I would stop just here with the eyes and the nose uh, to point out a few things. Notice that the eyes are not that big. Um, I associate really large eyes with cute characters, but interestingly, Pikachu's eyes are not all that large, so be careful uh, when you're drawing uh, Pikachu not to overdo it with the size of the eyes. Notice the distance between them. Quite a, a gap there. I'd say you could fit one, two, maybe two and a half of the eyes between uh, in that space there. And then the nose is really just a tiny little dot. Um, and so the main thing you need to concentrate on is the placement. It's uh, much nearer the bottom of those two eyes. Um, then to the top. Let's go ahead now and do the mouth and these two big, I guess they're blushies. Are they blushies? You'll have to tell me, but he's got these two big red dots on his cheeks. So uh, let's get those into place right now. All right, so notice that the top uh, line of the uh, upper lip, I suppose you would say this uh, is, uh, is uh, sort of parted in the middle. That typical animal type suggests a, a cat, or I think uh, Pikachu is supposed to be, adopt, uh, the design is supposed to be inspired by a mouse. Is that correct? <laughs> Which is kind of surprising, because he doesn't really look like a mouse to me. Um, but in any case, I've chosen to give this big wide open smile, uh, and then just a line across the back there to show the tongue, and then, uh, as I said, these big uh, sort of red dot blushies that Pikachu has are actually considerably larger than the eyes, I'd say probably twice uh, in diameter. Uh, the relationship between those two. Well, of course, we can't be done with this until I draw the tail, so let's go ahead and get those lines into place. All right, so as you can see, there's definitely some zigzaggy action going on here. The zigs and zags very tightly compacted uh, near the body, and then, of course, this one gigantic zag. <laughs> Unless it's a zig. Let me know. Is this a zig right here or a zag? Uh, uh, that's uh, going to be, I would say, almost th this alone is the same size, really, as these uh, three. It sort of looks like three zigzags down here. Um, so that'll maybe uh, help you get a sense. And maybe just the entire length from here to here is not so different from the top of the head down to the bottom of the body in terms of getting that uh, length right. Now there's a few things I've forgotten here. One of them is the highlights of the eyes, these white dots that are going to be up here. Quite large. I was a little surprised as I studied how large the highlights uh, are in the uh, design. I imagined them smaller than that. And then um, the feet. Uh, instead of, uh, we got the five fingers, but uh, up here, or down here with the feet, we have just three toes. So I'm dividing um, both of these with just two lines to turn it into a three-toed foot. Now, I have decided uh, a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to uh, make this full color. Uh, by using mainly markers, but also colored pencil. And then I have a nifty little surprise uh, at the end of the video uh, as to w what I intend to do with this uh, illustration, uh, or you know where I intend to go with it, basically, because uh, it uh, certainly is not finished from my point of view. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, pull out one of the markers. Maybe I'll do some of that real time and then uh, time lapse later on. So I've got a yellow here, a Copic. People are always, what marker is that? Where can I find it? Please tell me everything about that marker. Uh, it is a Copic, C-O-P-I-C. And um, before I start coloring in, though, I'm going to take out this kneaded eraser and sort of dab away the lines a little bit because I don't want the pencil to discolor the uh, marker too much. So I'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll get back to the color. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and... This has sort of like a brush tip to it. I thought that might be the best one to use for coloring this in. Um, I've chosen markers because uh, it really... I think of Pikachu primarily as an anime character, and that color is very smooth. Uh, you know, when you see animation, very smooth uh, from uh, throughout the entire image, and... Um, you know, using watercolor or something tends to not be quite so smooth looking. So, basically, what can I say about my uh, markering technique here? Just uh, 
basically doing my best not to leave streaks. Happily with yellow, I think it tends not to, you know, whatever streaks there are, not quite as visible as might be with other colors. Um, and uh, later on, in just a second, I'm going to be adding uh, shading with a sort of ochreish, brownish color, which uh, should hopefully make it look even more anime-like, because in a lot of anime uh, illustrations, you see that uh, the shadows are done with a darker version of the same color, basically, or a, a very similar color, just darker, rather than going in with... Um, you know, black or dark gray or whatever. So anyway, I think basically you get the um, idea here, uh, the speed with which uh, I approach, which is to say not very fast at all. And uh, rather than bore you to death with this part of the process, I'll finish this up in time lapse and we'll be back to do the shadows. So as promised, I'm pulling out another marker. This is also a Copic, but you know, I want to stress there's no need to buy the exact same brand that I use, uh, I would venture to say almost any type of marker w would work uh, for an illustration of Pikachu. And so I'm adding just a darker brownish color here on the edges of the illustration. I wanted to point out how I saw some that did a sort of a shadow beneath the chin almost, although you can't really see a chin. But instead of there being a line there, that this was uh, indicated entirely by way of the change in color. And I saw some illustrations in which the um, part of the tail was in shadow, so I'm going to do that. Although it may look weird for a moment. There is a little dark brown area down here where the tail joins the body. I'm going to do that, I've decided, with a uh, colored pencil. And, uh, yeah, I'll do a little more over here. I guess I'll go ahead and this part will be all real time. Try to get a nice little shadow down here. Now I want this foot to pop out a little, so I'm going to leave that uncolored. How do you like that, huh? This Brooklyn guy drawing Pikachu. Yeah, Pikachu, I'm a big fan. And I have always actually uh, admired the design of Pikachu. I think uh, uh, it's a good example of less is more. By keeping this character uh, simple, the character is more memorable. And I would say that's part of the key to the success of the character's appeal. Well, I'm going to go ahead now and uh, do some of the inking, and I, I guess I'll start by doing that real time, and then probably time lapse through some of the rest of it. Now, one of the things about inking an illustration like this that is uh, maybe slightly nerve-wracking is you really should try, if possible, to uh, ink every line with a single stroke. Easier said than done. Basically, as I looked at uh, illustrations, uh, I could tell that the person was not going back and forth over that line. They were just dropping it in with one single stroke of the pen. And, I mean, like you can see a little bit of an imperfection there as I stopped mid-stroke. Part of it, again, um, in doing these videos, I've, I've taped the paper down. Probably shouldn't do that, <laughs> but it does make it easier for people to see what I'm doing. Uh, and that it, it's best, uh, I would suppose, to uh, be able to turn it, turn the page uh, to work with the natural uh, pivot point of your wrist. And in fact, I think I'll probably do that. Why not? I'm going to cut this thing off of the uh, desk <laughs> that it's taped down to and finish inking this uh, in a way where you can see it moving around.
So yeah, you know, it is a, a, a character who, uh, that is fairly simple to draw, but the uh, inking process can be tricky, especially if you challenge yourself to try to get every line uh, with a single stroke of the pen. I certainly found it challenging, but um, you are rewarded with a very authentic looking illustration if you do that. Now I'm going to move on. I'm going to take a uh, red marker. This is Le Trace It. <gasps> He has more than one brand of marker. Yes, I do. I've got such a hodgepodge of different uh, markers that I've picked up over the years. But yes, these little um, blushies, pika blushies, are um, really bright red. So just get the reddest marker you have and uh, go for it. And then I did say that some of this was going to be done by way of... Um, colored pencils, and that's what I'm going to do here. It's crucial uh, to get this brown near the base of the tail. That uh, is an interesting little touch, because brown does not really occur anywhere else in this character that I can see. Um, but it basically covers up that first zig <laughs> before moving on to the next zag. Um, and speaking of zigzags, the brown color itself sort of zigzags across as it comes to a stop. So I don't know how much of that detail you can see. This is about as close as my camera will zoom in. But yes, that, this little touch of brown here at the base of the tail is surprisingly important for capturing the full Pikachu-ness of Pikachu. Um, I'm going to finish up some of the coloring with color pencil and then we're going to move on to my fun little final touch to this illustration. Alright, so we are basically done with this illustration, but what I want to do, uh, I came up with this slightly crazy idea. What if the US Postal Service issued a Pikachu stamp? that we could put on all our letters for mailing cute little cards all around the world. And so what I'm going to do is take this image and uh, transform it by way of, um, you know, pencil, ink, watercolor, and so forth uh, into a uh, postage stamp and even put a little stamp, you know, like franking the stamp, canceling the stamp at the end. Uh, I'm not going to do this in a sort of teaching way. I'm just going to do it all in time lapse to finish things off. And uh, I'll be back with some final words. <laughs> Well, there's my video on Pikachu, just in case anyone's wondering, 96 cents, that refers to 1996, the year that Pikachu made his debut on the world stage. Um, but uh, sorry there's nothing in this video about how to draw the postage stamp part of it. If you would like uh, to see such a video, let me know in the comment section. Uh, seems like an oddly specific thing to teach. How to draw a postage stamp by Mark Crilly. Um, but if you want it, Gosh darn it, I will do that video. But before I go, I want to thank everyone who has supported me by getting any of my books, Brody's Ghost and Mickey Falls, uh, my graphic novel series, as well as Mastering Manga 1 and Mastering Manga 2, my How to Draw books. Honestly, it means so much to me uh, when you pick up those books, when you help me out that way. But I think it is time to lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.